Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna go through how to link an exponential function to a previous function with matching gradients and also matching the exact point as well. So before I go into doing that, what I do wanna talk about is what I think the best approach is to IA1 for your PSMT for 12 methods. So across the board, right, I've seen that there's a lot of PSMTs going around where you've got to either make a BMX track or a roller coaster or something of that nature. Now, when you're first designing your BMX track or your roller coaster, I would not recommend doing what I did here on grid paper. What I mean by that is I would start by doing each function one by one so that you can link up the gradients, right? So for example, how I would start, I would start like this. I'd just derive my first function, then I'd go and derive my second function. Then I'd design my third function. Then I'd design my fourth function or fifth function or whatever. Notice that I've just continued to go one by one. Why this is such a good approach is because when it comes to deriving exponential functions, it's really difficult to, for example, find an exponential that starts at this point and ends at this point, but also has a matching gradient with another point. It's extremely hard to do that. It's even harder to do it if, say, you've got another function after your exponential. So if you've got some sort of a log function or hyperbola after that, it is so tricky because you've got to first, you've got to figure out what this function is, which has to sit perfectly in between the orange line and the red line. And it's just so difficult to get those coordinates perfect. So what I would definitely recommend 100% when you're creating your model, I would create each function one by one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find an exponential function that has a matching gradient to this quadratic here that we've already derived and we want it to approximately go through this point. Now, because it's an exponential function, which is quite tricky to derive, it doesn't matter if it doesn't cut through this point perfectly, as long as it's somewhat close to what our draft is, that's perfectly fine. And this is exactly why I think it's best to do each function one by one instead of have your whole draft drawn because then even if this function say ends up at this point that doesn't matter because we can just start our third function from this point so our goal for this video is just to find an exponential function that is close to cutting through and stopping at this dot but we're aware that it might go a little bit above or a little bit below so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write y is equal to e to the power of we're gonna have bx minus c in brackets. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add sliders on Desmos. Uh, we might just quickly change the color of this graph. And I'm just gonna make this uh, k of x as well. Okay, so basically if I move these sliders, notice that it changes the shape of my graph. So step one of this whole procedure is we want to just find, we want to find something that's going to kind of fit. And it might take a little bit of mucking around with sliders. Okay, so I'd say that this is getting pretty close, right? So what we're going to do now is, now that we've got kind of a rough idea of what we want, we are going to change this B value to 0 0.3 and we're going to change our C value to 2.1. Then we can just remove these sliders. So step two of this process is to add a derivative function for this, our first function, and to add a derivative function for this function here. So to add a derivative function, I can just type in G dash of X and you'll see that purple line there gives me a derivative function. What I might also quickly do, I might just restrict the domain of this function, the second function. Uh, let's just go from four to 14. The reason I chose 14 is just because that's where the coordinate is of our point that we want to almost match with. So we've got g of x, we also need to create a graph of k of x. And just temporarily, we're gonna hide our original functions. So right now, what we are looking at, right, is we're just looking at what the gradient is of both of these functions. 
Now, our goal, right, at x equals 4, we want these gradients to be linking up perfectly. So our job right now is to ensure that these functions meet perfectly. And the way we're going to do that, and this is a bit of a trial and error process, so you'll have to explain and document how you're actually doing this in your solve section. So how you're going to do that is up to you. That's your choice. But essentially what we're going to do is I'm just going to start to muck around with the decimals that are here and here. So for example, if I make that 3.1, okay, so notice that went up a little bit. What about if I do 3.5? Okay, I'm getting a little bit closer. What about 3.6? Okay, so what about 3.9? So see how now this is just a matter of me playing around with these decimals. Um, I can also muck around with this one as well if I want to. But primarily, I think that it's best to just muck around with the B value here. So I'm going to do a bit of trial and error right now. I'm going to speed up this part of the video and then we'll come back once I've got these functions matching up perfectly. Now, what I'm also doing here is you'll notice that when I get really close to matching, I'm zooming in because I want to get this as accurate as possible. Remember, the aim of this PSMT is to have a matching slope or matching gradient to the previous function. So right now, remember, just to uh, let you guys know again, we're looking at the gradient functions. These aren't even actually our functions. These are the gradients of the original function. We need these to match. Okay, so I've found a point now, I've found a value for this, for our B value, which is obviously quite long, but the gradients now match up perfectly. So if I zoom right out, and I'm going to have to zoom out quite far, um, that whole process probably took me about maybe five minutes max. Okay, so our gradients are matching, which is good, but that's not, uh, so what we're going to do now is let's just add these functions back. Okay, so notice that our gradients are matching, but these two points aren't actually matching yet. So these two points need to match. You can't have a gap in, say, a roller coaster or a BMX track. So now we've got to get these two points to match, but this is the easy part. So all we've got to do to get these points to match is we're going to add on, so onto our exponential function, we're going to add a value we're going to add a value for the constant on the end. The constant on the end of an exponential function just shifts our graph upwards or downwards. So if we just have a look at the y value of this point, the y value of that point is 0 0.9676. The y value of this point is 1. So we've got to add on whatever 1 minus 0 0.9676 is. And that works out to be 0 0.9676. 0, 0.0324. Okay, so if I add that on, and if we zoom into that, it looks like that's matching pretty much perfectly to the naked eye. I'm assuming it'll be slightly off if we zoom in far enough, but it'll be pretty close, and if we really wanted to, we could do a similar process to what we just did, where we could just keep changing the value of d to refine the function. Okay, so we might just get it a little bit closer, which I'll speed up the video for. Now we've got our function, notice it's actually, it doesn't go anywhere near this point. So the way around that, what we could do, if I really wanted to get this perfect, but it doesn't actually matter too much, um, if I really wanted to work around this, I'd have to begin to play around with this value. But then I've got to remember that if I play around with this value, that's going to then change this. 
So if you really wanted to, you could try again. You could do this whole process again with a new C value, and then you could try to get it to match a little bit more perfectly. But because we're not, like we're just doing each function one by one, what I could just do is I could just say that my exponential function is only going to go from 0 to 7. So if I just change this to 7, this could be my exponential function here, and that's it. If I really wanted to, I could make it maybe 0 to 8, so it's a little bit longer, or even 9. Maybe not 9, because see how that's quite long already. Let's make it even 7.5 is fine. So now we've got our exponential function. If we just add our derivative graphs again, you can see that because those match perfectly, that means that the gradient between this function so the gradient between this function and this function matches perfectly and because we went and changed the d value the constant hanging on the end um, that also means that not only are the gradients or the slopes matching but the actual point is matching as well so there's no gap in our roller coaster or our bmx track and the slope is pretty much perfect i guess if you wanted to in your limitations section you could talk about how like we've only used a trial and error approach and therefore there might be a slight gap here but you have to zoom in pretty far to see that gap so therefore in terms of your reasonableness in your reasonableness section you can talk about how this is very reasonable because according to the naked eye it, the gradients match and the points match and if you even zoom in far enough you can still see that that is the case like if i zoom in as far as possible uh, i'm not going to just to save time but these two points match up perfectly even if you zoom in very very far the gradients match as well so this is how to add an exponential function to your model for your psmt in methods so that's it for this video guys uh, if you have any comments make sure to leave them in the comments section of this video thanks for watching